Hey, yo, what's good? This is my movie review for Raging Bull, starting Robert De Niro and also Joe Pesci as his brother, as Jake LaMotta's brother. Um, Joey LaMotta, Joe LaMotta, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, of course, I've heard all these great things about him. And I read a little bit about Jake LaMotta's life. So... I decided to give this movie a, a watch to see if it's worth it, to see if it's a good movie from a boxing fan's perspective, also from like just a regular fan's perspective, and also knowing a little bit about Jake LaMotta's life, if it, if it was accurate to his life. And I got to say, I really liked this movie. It wasn't too long. It was about two hours long, but... Uh, Jake LaMotta has an amazing life, a, a tragic life, and I think that was, uh, they did enough to portray his life, not his full life, because uh, the movie started in with this first loss, so his first loss where he he was losing on points, and then he he knocked his opponent down. In the last round, but he couldn't get him out of there because he was saved by the bell. And and apparently they robbed him. That was against Jimmy Reeves. Yeah, his opponent was named Jimmy Reeves. And that's when it started. So, But that's kind of the only complaint I would have about this movie. That it doesn't really go over his life before that. Because his life before boxing was pretty amazing. He's son of immigrants. And he was a troubled teenager, and he would assault people for money. You know, at what his dad gave him a ice pick, and that was the first time he said people feared him. And he did time as a juvenile, and that's where he discovered boxing. But they didn't talk about that. They didn't go over any of that. It just started with his first loss. So. That, that would probably be my only complaint. I wish they had, at least, I'm not saying that they should have went over that or, or um, shown all of his life because then the movie would have been pretty long. And like I said, I think the movie was perfect. I said by the end of the movie, I was like, dude, this movie better get over soon because any more and it's going to be way too long. And it was just the perfect amount. This movie was in black and white and honestly I think this movie was only in black and white because the fight scenes were so bloody you got people um Jake LaMotta like eyes squirting out blood and just bleeding all over the place and his opponents bleeding all over the place there's just so much blood and that honestly I think that's the only reason <laughs> this movie was in black and white and if I'm wrong just Leave me in the description. Spare me your nasty comments, please. <laughs> please. Um, yeah, it, it goes over his pretty much his career, his involvement with the mob, that he didn't really want to get involved with the mob, his, his fights with Sugar Ray Robinson. It goes his second fight with Sugar Ray Robinson, and I think his third fight with Sugar Ray Robinson. And then his last fight, his sixth fight, when he was already middleweight champion. So it, it doesn't go over the first, fourth, or fifth. And I would have liked it to go over the fourth or fifth because he lost those fights, but it was close decisions. And he every time he, he thought it was, there were robberies. But this movie did not go over that. I think that would have added to the movie because he, he would have kept building up this anger that he had Throughout the whole movie, he was just angry at life, and that was that was um, accurate to his real life because he was an angry kid, an angry teenager, an angry adult throughout his whole life. Um, he divorced his first wife, and that's when he started dating his lady named Vicky, who was a beautiful blonde. Uh, I read about her, and I read about their marriage, and that's exactly how I pictured her, just a bombshell in the movie. I forgot who... I forgot the actress's name, but she was gorgeous in this movie, and I think she did a very good job portraying Vicky LaMotta, who would, who was a blonde, and J Jake, um, 
Jake divorced his wife for her. But it was a, basically a, a tale of Jake LaMotta trying to get his title shot. He wanted this title shot so bad. He was beating everybody. Fought Sugar Ray. Sugar Ray Robinson fought this guy named um, Gerardo. I believe his name was a young buck. And they made him go down to 155 to fight Gerardo. But he he still couldn't get a title shot. He still couldn't get it until he 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 actually had to get involved with the mob. He actually had to do what they said, do their bidding, because they're like, man, this guy's too hard headed. And these everybody in this movie portrayed a perfect, I believe, a perfect Italian American. It's like something out of The Godfather. That's what you think about when you think about these mobsters and Jake LaMotta just talking like they talk and Joe Pesci perfect italian accent that that's how <laughs> i would think like italians or italian americans talked at that time so beautiful portrayal by all of them and like i said robert de niro does a great job portraying jake lamada's anger throughout his life so he so jake lamada threw the fight against who was it billy fox so he threw that fight and he just went went in the back and he just started crying and crying because someone as stubborn as Jake LaMotta never wanted to lose. And that's why he didn't want to deal with the mob ever. He didn't want to deal with them at all. He hated them. He never wanted to deal with them. And that was, it was really rare for a boxer back then to not have any dealings with the mob. But he was trying to do his bidding by his own. But... Then one day the mob head, his name was Tommy. He's like, dude, I don't care how many Ray Robinsons you beat, how many Gerardos you beat. You can't do this on your own. You're going to need help. And that's when Jake LaMotta decided to throw that fight. And in the back, he was just crying. And you could feel Jake's pain. He was just crying because, like I said, he hated losing. He didn't want to throw that fight, but he had to, to get that title shot. Years later, he got that title shot, and he finally got that title shot, and he just got his moment, finally had his moment, and it was just like, a it was a beautiful moment, Lamada's all bleeding, his opponent's all bleeding, it was some French dude named Serdan, Marcel Serdan, I, I love the fight scenes too, they are really exaggerated, and they're, they're just so gory. They're so gory. <laughs> but I love them though. Something like Rocky. If you don't if you don't like Rocky um fight scenes then you might not like these fight scenes, but I think they're really fun. They're really cool. Not not too realistic, but you know, they they're filmed from like the fighter's point of view or the opponent's point of view, stuff like that. So he finally made his moment. Also in between, this was more of a story of his personal life too. So in the ring, but also in his personal life. I would say most of the movie is outside of the ring. Of course, not even, he's not training. It's just outside of the ring, his problems with his wife, domestic violence. And then Jake LaMotta was a paranoid man. He always thought someone was cheat. was, his wife was cheating on him. He thought his brother was cheating, was was cheating on his was you know was doing his wife he thought everybody in the mob was doing his wife he didn't want he didn't like them to talk about him will talk he didn't like her talking to them and this is very true to real life that's what i liked about this movie it's very true to jake's real life it might be a little bit exaggerated for hollywood but it's very accurate it's very accurate then he just there's one crazy scene where he goes to his brother and he's like you fuck my wife. Did you fuck my wife? And he's like, dude, I'm not even going to answer you. Then he, um, Joey leaves. 
And then he goes to his wife. He's like, you're fucking my brother. And she's like, what? What are you talking about? She's like, oh, yeah. You want me to t- tell you? And she, she said he did everything. He did his brother. He did everybody. And he just slaps the shit out of her like 30 times. Knocks her down. Runs to his brother's house. Starts beating his ass in front of his wife and his children. And just... Beats his butt on the ground, starts stomping on him, and and his wife and Jake's wife Vicky tries to hold him back, and he hits her with the right hand, knocks her out. All the meanwhile, um, Joey's children are just watching, and they're not even like crying or nothing. They're just in shock. They're just in shock, and I think that's a very good portrayal of the times in the Italian American culture, not just maybe like. Yeah, yeah, the Italian American culture, the one of machismo, the one that, yeah, I hit my wife and what. I think that's very true to that as well. And they did a very, very good job at portraying that. And after he, after Jake won the championship, it kind of, <laughs> kind of went downhill. He just, no one, tr- no one liked him. No one liked Jake Lamada because <laughs> he was a troublesome guy. He was very troublesome. So after his his last fight with Sugar Ray Robinson, where he he, he got beat up <laughs> so bloody, I gotta tell you guys, like this, this movie was very very gory. The fight scenes are so gory, man, so gory. <laughs> it's just so much blood. But the fight scenes with Sugar Ray Robinson. Also, the guy looked nothing like Sugar Ray Robinson. He was just a dark guy, like a black dude, a dark-skinned black guy who was skinny. That was it. He wasn't, he wasn't, he didn't look like, he didn't look like um, Sugar Ray Robinson at all. But anyway, so he lost that fight, and after the fight, he he told Sugar Ray Robinson, Hey, but you could have knocked me down. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. And... Sugar Ray just congratulated him or whatever. And after that, his life went downhill. He he opened his own his own nightclub called Jake Lamada's, but it, it caught on. He started making funny jokes about his wife and all this. But he it, it was just a sad sight to see him because he looked sad. Robert De Niro, I gotta say it once again, he did a great job portraying the sadness and the anger even when he was smiling you know Jake LaMotta looked sad because he was a sad angry individual that hated his life already and he just went into nightclubs or his own nightclub and he was on center stage telling all these jokes but you could see it in his face you could see it in the way he moved and the way he talked That he was just a sad individual. Great performance. So his wife left him after a while. And he's like, I'm leaving you. I'm taking the custody of the kids. And she was in Jake's, Jake LaMotta's, the nightclub's parking lot. And Jake LaMotta tried to get in the car, but she locked it. She's like, "Uh uh-uh, I'm leaving your ass. So she left him. And his is a tragic life. He, He let some... 14 year olds in his club drinking and then they they ratted him out and he they went some detectives went to his house and he they're like do you know these do you know this girl she's 14 she was 14 and Jake LaMotta was there kissing them and he was like oh let me see if you're 21 and just started making out with him and it turned out that that they were 14 they were 14 year old girls he was like man they didn't look 14 and they did not look 14 <laughs> nor did vicky um that was the age that jake lamotta married vicky she didn't look 15 either but it is what it is jake lamotta got put in jail for a while it showed the jail scene <laughs> where he was just so mad so ain't oh always angry that anger that never left jake lamotta's life was perfectly portrayed and then in jail oh i don't know if it never escaped his life i hope that he found happiness after a while but i'm just saying never escaped his early life because for those that don't know jake lamotta is still alive he's the oldest um prize fighter or former prize fighter 
that there is, that there has been. So he goes to jail, starts punching the wall, starts punching everything. And then he's like, oh, my hands. <laughs> he's like, oh, my hands. Just start laying down, just pissed at the world. And that's when they just showed him out. And he's just saying something to the mirror. And he's like, it's like he's going to go perform. But he's before he goes perform, he's with a cigar. And he's like, it's your fault, Charlie. You never take care of me. It's your fault. And all throughout the movie, he he read poems, like some beautiful poems. I don't I don't remember them, but they're really good poems. Like in the beginning, it started with a good poem. And then throughout the film, it gives a few poems. And then he ends with that sort of soliloquy to, the, to his mirror. He's like, it's your fault, Charlie. You never take care of me. You should have taken care of me. The, the blame is fully on you. But the blame was all on LaMotta. Jake LaMotta's fault the whole time. Of course. Of course. And that's when they call him to go perform. And he and he walks through the door and that's the movie. I really liked it. As a boxing fan. As a boxing historian of sorts. I put that in quotes. As a movie watcher. I really enjoyed the fight. It had... It had a, a um, I think it had enough boxing scenes to satisfy me as a boxing fan. It had enough of his real life fights, like his first loss. I keep forgetting what's his name, Jimmy, Jimmy Reeves. It had his Jimmy Reeves fight. It had three fights with Sugar Ray Robinson. It had when he won, he won the title against Sedan. When he threw that fight against Billy Fox, it had one fight against Zivic. So it had. Plenty of fights, plenty of good, good action also, but plenty of good story of good storytelling by by everybody involved. His wife Vicky, his brother Joey, it, it showed his domestic life, his his demons. It showed his demons, and that I think that's one of the most interesting aspects of Jake LaMotta's life. Maybe even more important than than his in ring career even and i think by at least acknowledging his earlier past like when he was a teenager and he did time that that would have that that would have helped portray his anger and, and his hate at the world even more robert de Niro did a great job but i think that little backstory that background would have served this movie very well and it would have made the the turn he served by the end of the movie even more significant because he was going back to the spot where he found boxing in the first place. Like that destiny did not escape him. But alas, I didn't write the movie. <laughs> it probably would have been a lot worse if I wrote it. But yeah, in conclusion, very good movie. It's a classic, of course, of Hollywood, but I finally got to watch it. And I got to say, as a movie, as a boxing fan, as a boxing movie, it's really good. I give it an A. I don't give it an A+, plus because they are missing that part of Jake LaMotta's life. But I did say the movie wasn't too long. It had a good story. It wasn't black and white, but for good reason. And that did not hurt the movie at all. It, it, it was very smooth throughout. It rode like a story. And that's what I liked about this movie. It just, it you glided over it. So, I give it an A. I think it's a must, definitely a must watch. At least you gotta watch it once. Is it a must buy? Um, It's not a movie that I would watch. Like, you know, want to watch every day. But I think I would love it as a gift. <laughs> But uh, I don't think it's a must buy just yet. In that category, maybe I give it a C. But I think it'd be a great gift to give to someone. But it's definitely a must watch. If you could find it for free. Or you could. F I, I rented mine from the library. If you could rent yours or watch it on Netflix. or I don't have that. I don't know if they have it. Or on Redbox or any other blockbuster. <laughs> it's definitely a must watch. A movie. If you could buy it for the same price that you rent it. Definitely do that. So, must watch. 
not necessarily a must buy unless you're a big boxing fan or a big Jake LaMotta fan or even a big you know what yes buy it if you're a big boxing fan or a big boxing historian or a big Sugar Ray Robinson fan buy this movie or a big Robert De Niro fan if you're a Robert De Niro fan you probably already you probably already have this movie so definitely definitely a must have for that but definitely a must watch 100% a must watch for anybody involved it does cuss a lot so those of you who get easily offended by cussing I don't think you should watch this movie that's that's probably the only time I would say not to watch this movie because it does cuss a lot but that's my re- movie review. Thank you for watching. What do you think about this movie? It is is it one of the greatest movies ever made? I think it is. I really liked it. Thanks for watching everybody. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any other uh, movie recommendations or documentary re- re- recommendations that you want me to review and watch, it could be about boxing and it could or wrestling. That's the movies I could review or about anything else that you would like me to review. Just hit me up in the comment section. Just let me know. I'll do it. I'll even probably buy a movie or something if you if you guys suggest it. Thank you for watching once again. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.